everyone and welcome back to another edition of Friday Sews. So today I'm going to be sharing you with you a few makes that I have and also tell you about some of my plans that I have coming up and then talk about a little bit what's going on in my my family life and personal life. First of all, the one item that I've one of the items I've completed is this top. It is another Love Notions LTD top, the laundry day tee. I'm, I'm just addicted to it. I'm sorry. Whenever I'm in a rut and want to sew, but don't really know what I want to sew, I just take out some knit fabrics and I cut myself another laundry day tee because it's just so wonderful. This one here is also with some scraps, but it's all the same scraps. I had roughly about half a yard, um, a couple of half yard pieces of this. So I did a seam down the middle in the front and the back and I did the little cap sleeves and I tried to do something a little fun by stretching the fabric as I sewed to make like a mild lettuce hem I have a serger but it's still in the box I know one of these days I will get it out so I just did this on my normal sewing machine and then I also you know did the collar and everything I'll post some pictures and maybe a video here of me wearing it I know this is probably, I think, my fourth, my fourth laundry day tea. It is my, no, is it my fourth? I think it's my third. It might be my third. I don't know. I don't, I don't remember. But I did, I did the regular shirt length. I did that in, a, in the si a size too big. And then I did my patchwork with my pineapples and green fabric. I did, I think, a short sleeve version of that. And that was also the tunic length. So this is the little cap sleeve and tunic length. I really like the tunic length, especially when I wear leggings, because it just makes me feel a little more comfortable. Okay, and then also what I finished is I finished a, almost finished a pair of pajamas for my daughter. I'll post a picture here. She loves like minky fabric. She wants to be comfortable in this. And minky fabric is very comfortable. Oh my gosh, it is, it is great for pajamas. Um, it's nice and furry. It's nice and comfortable. Now, even though I live in the South, and the day I'm recording this, August 27th, 2021, it is 91 degrees outside. Okay, 91. And it's hot. She is wearing these pajamas. I had fin finished the pants. I'm not quite finished with the top yet. I took a picture of her in them and she won't take them off. So she picked out the fabric and she is wearing it. Let me show you the pattern I used. I used this pattern here. I know you've seen this before because I did her penguin pajamas with this pattern here. And then the top, I used the tank top for my daughter's swimsuits. And then I used this top to do the matching, um, the matching to, this, to the pajamas that I did um, in the minky. Now this fabric here, I think it's supposed to be a knit. It's a knit top with flannel pajamas bottoms. I did the top out of the minky and as you can see in the pictures, it doesn't fit right. Um, both of them are a size small that I did for her, but the sleeves, I guess you could tell here, the sleeves did not go all the way down to her wrists that I would like it to. And I think because of the minky fabric, the neckline is a little too big. So what I'm going to do is I got some gray knit, not a rib knit, just a regular knit. And I'm going to put cuffs on it. I'm going to put a neckband on it. And then I'm going to also put a little cuff on the bottom. I believe this, this pattern has you do a neckband on it, or it might just be a fold. And I think, no, I think it's a fold under and stitch. But with the minky fabric, it just, it's not going to work. It's not going to work like that. So I am going to, um, cause it just gets, when you have a little hem on minky or like that furry fabric, it just, it gets weird looking. Um, it gets like ruffly and everything. So you can't really, I've found out that I can't really do any more than maybe an inch hem. Cause I did it on the pants, came out great. Did the waistband, came out great. But that, those parts, I'm going to put a little gray cuffs on it, waistband and neck. Then what, what I'm working on is I am working on cosplay slash Halloween costumes for so far only two of my daughters. My youngest daughter, 
I don't know. Now, my girls will be 15 when Halloween comes about. And I don't know. I don't think she's feeling it this year, which is fine. Um, I would still like to make her something, even though we probably will go trick-or-treating. We went trick-or-treating last year just because I wanted to show off the costumes that we made. So we probably will go trick-or-treating this year, but we don't stop at houses. We just end up walking around with their little buckets that they've had since birth, um, the little Halloween pails. But what I'm working on right now is my oldest daughter. I think she's coming up with the original concept of an outfit. I don't have the picture of the whole outfit, but it's going to be some kind of samurai ninja outfit. I think it's based on one of the cartoons she watches. Oh, oh, oh excuse me, anime that they that she watches, or a game. I'm I'm not sure, but she drew it out for me what she wanted, and we picked this um, pattern here. This is Simplicity eighty nine fifty two, and we're going with this top right here. I guess it's like a almost like a kimono top. I did have a kimono pattern. But that's not what she wants. Um, what we're doing so far is I made the mock-up of this. Um, I made it just like this and I did only one sleeve. Because she wants one side to be a full sleeve and she wants the band on it. And then the other side is going to be short because she's going to be wearing some kind of um, forearm armor and like weapon on it. So that's what we used here. I will put a picture up here. Um, I did I did a complete muslin out of this. I use actual muslin fabric since I had some of that left over from the Renaissance costume that I did because my Renaissance dress, I actually made it in the muslin because I just thought that with the time period and the, the look and feel of that fabric was a little more of the look I was going for. So I did that. I did it in a size small and it fits. Um, I pretty much did it exactly the way they said they said to do it, except I didn't do the ties because the costume that she's going to wear, um, um, I did the full length, but we're going to crop it to like her waist. And then she's going to have like, um, I think she calls it an obi. It's, I've, I've been calling it a cummerbund. I'm sorry. I know that that's not what it was supposed to be, but she wants this to be white in a white satin. The um, the trim is going to be like a royal blue. You have all the fabrics already. And then she's going to have the OB go around her waist, around her waist and probably the high hip in a royal blue. And then she wants almost like an open skirt, sort of like the way I did my Renaissance dress. We're going to have a band that goes around her waist naturally to hold up the skirt, which will be covered by her OB. And then it's going to be open like on the side so that She's going to wear a pair of legging pants underneath it. And the pattern for the leggings, we're going to be using this one. Now this one is, it is a simplicity pattern. Unfortunately, I had the display number, which is D0744. I made these once before for her um, Power Ranger costume, which I will put the link down below. She's the one that did the, was the Purple Power Ranger about three years ago. So I'm going to make this one. I'm probably going to make naturally the, probably the all the way down to the ankle for that. I don't know if I have to talk to her about it because I don't think she wants it to be skin tight. So I may just go up a size so that it's not as tight fitting. And we also got like a blue cotton, cotton lycra knit to go with that. So that's, that's going to be very interesting. So I did the, like I said, I did the mock-up of that. And then um, I probably will go talk to her about how she wants to fit on the leggings. And hopefully I can get that done probably hopefully next by next Friday. You know, that's that's the goal because I like I really like to get all the Halloween costumes done and out of the way way before I want to get them done by October. So there is a, like a Comic Con going on in the Charlotte area, October 8th through the 10th, I believe. And I really would like to go go to that but you know with the virus going right crazy right now in the south and all that we're kind of hesitant of doing any indoor activities and that will be indoor I don't think it's at the, con the convention center I'm not exactly sure where it is um, but you can look online if you're interested in going and if you're going to be in the Charlotte area yeah you can go there 
So that is so far my plans for this weekend and next week is to finish that up and then also start, <clears throat> oh, excuse me, also start on my middle daughter's costume. She wants to be Len from a Vocaloid. Um, I'll, maybe I'll put a picture here of what she wants to be. Now she was Rin last year. I hope I'm saying these names right. I usually get them mixed up a little bit and I'll put a picture of that here. Um, I'm also going to be doing a video on that, on which patterns I use to come up with that outfit. The only thing I did not make on this outfit was the shorts. We just use a store-bought bought shorts for that. But for the Len outfit, um, I'm going to need to make that. I'm going to make the shorts, the shirt, the tie, and like little sailor bib that he wears, because it's different than the one I made last year. And also, um, we just kind of became friends with a family that literally lives right on our block down the road from us. And she also is into Vocaloids and anime and all that. So she's going to wear my daughter's Ren costume. Um, she's going to wear the shirt and the bow and the, the, like the sailor thing on the back. <laughs> and then she's going to you know have a store-bought pair of shorts that fit her. And then I'm going to make the arm pieces and the leg pieces for her because my daughter's going to reuse the ones I made last year for this year. And then I just have to make her shirt. I have to make her shirt and her shorts this year. So it's, it shouldn't be too much. I don't have a pattern right now for um, the shirt. The shorts for her outfit is I'm probably going to use this one. I I know I like, I have probably three to 400 patterns, but I know I made her pajamas, I made her the bottoms, and I actually made her the, t well, I didn't make her this top, I made her the top to the nightgown. Hmm. Oh, I made her this top, because she originally wanted a nightgown, and I made her a nightgown, but then she changed her mind, so I ended up cutting it off to be a top. But I made her the shorts, I made her the shorts for this one, and they fit really well, so... Why crack open a new pattern when I don't have to? And what I'm thinking about, since it's a Vocaloid and it's, you know, um, an animation, his shorts come out stiff. So I'm wondering if I could put like interfacing in there, make her sh the shorts stiffer and make it a little more anime Vocaloid-ish. Well, that's so. Those are the makes I did this week. And it seems like kind of a lot, but then it didn't seem like a lot because I wasn't in my, like, they were kind of fast sews. So I wasn't in my sewing room that much. Um, my sewing room is still a mess. So I just come in here to sew and that's it. <laughs> I don't hang out in here right now and I have to cut in my kitchen. So but that's okay because my kitchen is like waist height naturally, the counter. So it's so much easier on my back to cut cut out there. So now for life, my daughters have been in high school. They're freshmen in high school, and this is their second week. Um, so far, so far, so well. We don't know how long they're going to be in school. Schools around us are kind of shutting down for two to three weeks due to increase in cases. So we're just playing it by ear. Um, my middle daughter is decided to run for class president. So she joined, she's going to be joining the student council. She was, she came home one day and was so happy. I'm going to join student council. Yay. And I was like, great. And then she was like, no, I'm not going to do it because it's in the morning before school starts. But I bring them there early anyway, because they like to sit and have breakfast at school and they like to be with their friends and everything. And they like to like ease into their day, which is great because I know it can be hectic when you're trying to run out the door just so you make it in time. And then, so I was like, you're going to be there anyway, so you might as well see what it's about and then she came home today and she was like I'm gonna run for class president I was like go for it I'm all for it she was class president in fifth grade in elementary school and she really liked it they did some special events um, like they were she they were in charge of doing posters for the school special Olympics and cheering them on when they left 
They were also saying at some breakfasts that they had, you know, some were cele um, celebrating veterans, celebrating the volunteers that uh, the parents who volunteered at the school. So she did like a lot of um, special events and that was really great. So I'm very happy that she's doing that. And then my other daughter, my oldest one, she's into a lot of video games, Dungeons and Dragons. So she's going to join the, I think the game playing group. I'm not even sure the exact title, but it's a game playing group and they do online games. They do video games. They do tabletop games, uh, board games, card games. They do all that. And they do that probably for like an hour or so after school. So she's into that. And then my youngest daughter has expressed interest in doing robotics. So we do have a little bit of experience in robotics. My oldest daughter was in robotics for sixth grade and she liked it, but the, the, team that she was on they didn't really let the newbies do much of the work they let a lot of the eighth graders do most of the work when it came to competition but they did win the grand champion of I think the city version and then we did go to or maybe the county they won the county version and then we went to city and they lost on the city they didn't place in the city one. Well, I think you had to be in the top five but um, this robotics, since they're freshmen in high school, it's completely run by students. So I thought that was great. You know, naturally it's going to be overseen by a teacher, but the students do 100% of the work. So I thought that was great. So hopefully um, my youngest daughter will go into that. So, so that's all I have for, for right now. Um, like I said, I hope to get all my cosplay outfits done or cosplay slash, slash Halloween outfits done for my oldest daughter this week and I will show you on my Friday makes and then I probably will also do another cosplay um, video. I do have three other outfits, at least three other outfits, four other outfits to show you on cosplay from the past that I've made. So be on the lookout for that. So um, please like this video, give it a thumbs up if you like it. Please subscribe if you haven't and would like to see some more Friday Sews videos or some of the cosplay videos that I plan on making soon and um and tell your friends <laughs> tell your friends to come over and i would love to have everybody i'm trying to get at least 100 subscribers before the end of the year and i'm almost there so that would be great if you can help me out with that okay so that would be it for me today i hope where you are the sun is shining everyone's healthy and that you are getting some sewing in every day or doing something that brings you joy thank you for watching bye